Hello everyone, this is Lori Anderson, host for Resurrect the Republic RTR Truth Radio Barcast and contributor for FreedomOutpost.com. I wanted to bring to your attention something uh, that is swirling around the mainstream news and I want to help debunk a little bit of what is being said so that you are not fooled into believing this actually returns the land back to the states it does not let me be specific once again it does not today's date is april 26 of 2017. today there has been a briefing out of the white house about president donald trump signs the antiquities act executive order what is that about well i'm going to let you hear what has been said and then we will dig into that and show you what it is really about and being a good steward is also being a good neighbor and listening to the american people who we represent mr president thank you once again for fulfilling your campaign promise to give a voice to our local communities and states Let's be clear. The Antiquities Act grants the President the authority to declare historic landmarks, historic and prehistoric structures, and other objects of historic or scientific interest. To be sure, the Antiquities Act has been an effective tool for preserving some of our greatest treasures for our generations to come. The Act also specifies in law the President to designate the smallest area compatible with proper care and management of the objects to be protected. Despite this clear directive, smallest area has too often become the exception rather than the rule. As an example, Teddy Roosevelt, a President that I deeply admire. His first monument, the Devil's Tower in Wyoming, was about 1,200 acres. Yet, in recent years, we've seen, we've seen single monuments span tens of millions of acres. In some cases, monument designations have placed public lands off limits for grazing, fishing, mining, multiple use, and even outdoor recreation. A reminder that's inscribed in Roosevelt's Arch at the Yellowstone National Park, our nation's first national park, for the benefit and enjoyment of the people. And that's our mission. But somewhere along the way, the act has become a tool of political advocacy rather than public interest. And it's easy to see why designations, in some cases, are viewed negatively by those in local communities that are impacted the most. Let's be clear. This executive order does not remove any monuments. And this executive order does not weaken any environmental protections on any public lands. Under President Trump's leadership, I'm looking forward to working with and being an advocate for local, state, and tribal representation and to review the designations and provide recommendations for action where appropriate. Thank you again, Mr. President and Mr. Vice President for being here today and hearing the concerns of our American citizens. And he is absolutely right. It does not, I repeat, it does not give the power of the land that actually belongs to the states back to the states, including the land that was signed over by President Obama under that act in December, right before uh, he was getting ready to leave office that covers Nevada where the Bundy Ranch was where the standoff was that everybody keeps looking at nor in where Mike Lee is at and what happened with that situation don't you find it amazing that during the Bundy Ranch standoff and during these trials that are going on the federal government claims that it was their land in the first place, yet December of 2016, 
President Obama, by executive order, declared it a national monument in order to take that land. If it had already been their land in the first place, then he would have had no need to do that. Produce the titles. This is stolen land. The federal government is not allowed to own that land. Look up Article 1, Section 8, Clause 17. They are to remain in their 10 miles square inside the Washington, D.C., which is the District of Columbia, and they're only allowed to own certain needful buildings, such as forts, ports, magazines, arsenals, and things like that, and of the such. Therefore, I do not want you to be fooled by what you are hearing coming out of mainstream media. I will go into detail in a few minutes after you hear the rest of what has been said so that you understand what is really going on. The lands have not been given back to the rightful owners of that land, which are the states and the people of those states. Now I'd like to turn it over to my friend, Vice President Mike Pence, a man of faith, conviction, courage, and a man who loves his country, and I think embodies the motto, duty, country, honor. Mr. Vice President. Thank you, Secretary Zinke, for that uh, kind introduction. And to the governors and the senators, distinguished leaders who are gathered here today, I, I know I speak for all of them when I say thank you for stepping forward uh, to serve our country uh, at this important time. You are a true man of the West, uh, and the country is fortunate to have someone of your experience and knowledge leading the Department of the Interior. So thank you very much. You know, it's, uh, it's the greatest privilege of my life to serve as Vice President to President Donald Trump. He is a man of his word. In nearly 100 days, President Trump has been delivering on the promises that he made to the American people, one after another. He assembled a world-class cabinet. He's been fighting for American jobs every single day, even since Election Day. He's put a renewed emphasis on American energy. He's slashing through mountain range of red tape emulating out of the last administration. Thanks to his leadership, more than 500,000 jobs have been created in the year 2017. Businesses and consumers today are more confident than they have been in years and by some measures in decades. In Justice Neil Gorsuch, President Trump kept his promise to nominate to the Supreme Court a justice in the mold of the late and great Justice Antonin Scalia. He's securing our border, reducing illegal immigration, taking dangerous uh, illegal uh, criminals off of our streets. Uh, and we've seen a dramatic reduction uh, in illegal immigration at our borders since the outset of this administration. President Trump has also been putting America first by rebuilding our military, restoring the arsenal of democracy, and signing legislation to give our veterans the care that they deserve. And today, this administration will outline the president's vision for tax reform that will include one of the largest tax cuts for businesses and individuals in American history. In a word, President Donald Trump is in the promise-keeping business. He's already signed 28 bills into law, 30 executive orders, and today the president is delivering on yet another promise to the American people. In just a few moments, President Trump will begin to undo one of the great federal overreaches of recent decades, the abuse of the Antiquities Act by politicians in Washington, D.C., to grab land and power at the American people's expense. So I, under his leadership, we're going to once again, we're going to work with states to restore power to the people who have the best ability to protect our nation's natural, historic, and cultural treasures. And so I say with great gratitude for the energy that he has brought to this task for nearly 100 days that it is my high honor and distinct privilege to introduce to you the President of the United States of America, President Donald Trump.
Thank you, Mike. He's been a great vice president, a great help, and everybody loves Mike Pence. So I just want to thank you for your service. It's been incredible. It's a real pleasure to be at the Department of Interior where you help preserve the splendor and the beauty of America's natural resources. And I can tell you, the group that's in here right now, they're really doing the job. Right, Lisa? They're doing a good job? Uh, we're going to take care of Alaska, too. Don't worry about it. <laughs> and they protect the ability of the people to access and utilize the land which truly belongs to them and belongs to all of us. Secretary Ryan Zinke is doing an incredible job. And he never overlooks the details. He's a detailed person. Soon after he was confirmed, we had a snowstorm, big one. And he was out there on the steps of the Lincoln Memorial, shoveling the snow all by himself. And he's a strong guy. He did a good job. He did a very, very good job, but we're proud of him. In the first 100 days, we've taken historic action to eliminate wasteful regulations. They're being eliminated like nobody's ever seen before. There's never been anything like it. Sometimes I look at some of the things I'm signing, I say, maybe people won't like it, but I'm doing the right thing. And no regular politician's going to do. I don't know if you folks would do. I will tell you. Literally, some politicians have said, you're doing the right thing. I don't know if I would have had the courage to do some of these things, but we're doing them because it's the right thing to do, and it's for the good of the nation. We're returning power back to the people. We've eliminated job-destroying regulations on farmers, ranchers, and coal miners, on auto workers, and so many other American workers and businesses. Today, I'm signing a new executive order to end another egregious abuse of federal power and to give that power back to the states and to the people where it belongs. The previous administration used a 100-year-old law known as the Antiquities Act to unilaterally put millions of acres of land and water under strict federal Control. Have you heard about that? <laughs> Eliminating the ability of the people who actually live in those states to decide how best to use that land. Today, we are putting the states back in charge. It's a big thing. I'm pleased to be joined by so many members of Congress and governors who have been waiting for this moment, including Governor Herbert of Utah, Thank you. Thank you, Governor. Governor LePage of Maine, who, by the way, has lost a lot of weight. <laughs> I knew him when he was heavy, and now I know him when he's thin, and I like him both ways, okay? <laughs> Done a great job. Governor Calvo of Guam. Thank you. Governor Torres from the northern Mariana Islands. Thank you. Thank you, Governor. I also want to recognize Senator Orrin Hatch, who, believe me, he's tough. He would call me and call me and say, you got to do this. Is that right, Orrin? You didn't stop. He doesn't give up. And he's shocked that I'm doing it, but I'm doing it because it's the right thing to do. But I really uh, have to point you out, you didn't stop. And Mike, the same thing. So many people feel Mike Lee. So many people feel so strongly about this, and so I appreciate your, your support and your prodding and your never-ending prodding, I should say, because we're now getting something done that many people thought would never, ever get done, and I'm very proud to be doing it in honor of you guys. Okay? Thank you. Altogether, the previous administration bypassed the states to place over 265 Million acres, that's a lot of land. Million acres, think of it. 265 million acres of land and water under federal control through the abuse of the monument's designation. That's larger than the entire state of Texas. 
In December of last year alone, the federal government asserted this power over 1.35 million acres of land in Utah, known as Bears Ears. I've heard a lot about Bears Ears, and I hear it's beautiful. Over the profound objections of the citizens of Utah, the Antiquities Act does not give the federal government unlimited power to lock up millions of acres of land and water, and it's time we ended this abusive practice. I've spoken with many state and local leaders, a number of them here today, who care very much about preserving our land and who are gravely concerned about this massive federal land grab. And it's gotten worse and worse and worse and now we're going to free it up, which is what should have happened in the first place. This should never have happened. That's why today I'm signing this order and directing Secretary Zinke to end these abuses and return control to the people, the people of Utah, the people of all of the states, the people of the United States. Every day, we are going to continue pushing ahead with our reform agenda to put the American people back in charge of their government and their lives. And again, I want to congratulate the Secretary. I want to congratulate Oren and Mike and all of the people that worked so hard on bringing it to this point. And tremendously positive things are going to happen on that incredible land, the likes of which there is nothing more beautiful anywhere in the world. But now, tremendously positive things will happen. So I want to thank you. I want to thank everybody for being here. God bless you all, and God bless America. Thank you. Thank you very much. So I'll sign. Big one. <laughs> sure is. You ready? Okay. I think you have to maybe give him a pen. What do you have? I'm going to try to I'll take a minute. So, now that we have seen what they have said, here are the questions that need to be answered. Did President Donald Trump just give back the land to the states that was stolen by the federal government? Is he really returning power back to the people over their own land and their own resources? Is President Trump really putting the states back in charge of this land? And we're going to answer that. In the press briefing on the Whitehouse.gov website, listed April the 25th, 2017, as you can see, this happened in the James Brady press briefing room. This is the press briefing by the Secretary of Interior, Ryan Zinke, on the executive order to review the designations under the Antiquities Act. So this is what really was just signed by President Trump. This is going to tell you exactly what this executive order does. Tomorrow, the President will come to the Department of Interior to my office to sign the Executive Order to review the Antiquities Act. The Executive Order will direct me as the Secretary to review prior monument designations and to suggest legislative changes or modifications to the monuments. 
The monument designation period stretches from January the 1st, 1996, under which the act, and it has to include acts and monuments that are 100,000 acres or more. So the beginning date is January the 1st, 1996, and the other condition is that they have to be a total of 100,000 acres or more. That should include about 24 to 40 monuments. That gives you a kind of a thumbnail. The executive order directs the interior to provide an interim report to the president within 45 days of the day of the order and a final report to the president within 120 days of that order. For the record, in the last 20 years in particular, that would cover about oh, tens of millions of acres to include marine area sanctuaries. Some of these areas were put off limits for traditional uses like farming, ranching, timber, harvest, mining, oil and gas exploration, fishing and motorized recreation. The designations on the kind of bookends that are the Grand Staircase Escalante National Monument of 1996 and that was the first BLM land designation all the way to really the Bears Ears National Monument in 2016 which has been in the news a lot. So those are the kind of two bookends. Again it's monuments that are 100,000 acres or larger so it hits the big ones. The president's authority on such matters is singular so you know there is no requirement for public input before the designation of a monument and there is no NEPA requirement. Normally when you do a land use project we normally NEPA. The Antiquities Act is the exception. Again we don't have to go through legislative process. The president determ determines it and it does not have to go through the NEPA. In this case, the administration, as you know, has heard from members of Congress and states, and in some cases, the designation of monuments may have resulted in loss of jobs, reduced wages, and reduced public access. In this case of sign public land use, we feel that the public, the people that the monuments affect, should be considered. And that is why the president is asking for a review of the monuments designated in the last 20 years to see what changes, if any, Improvements can be made and give states and local communities a meaningful voice in the process. I can tell you from a kid who grew up in Montana or grew up in the West where much needed monuments have taken place, I think today's executive order and review of the Antiquities Act over the past two decades is long overdue. And the policy is consistent with the president's promise to give Americans a voice and make sure their voices are heard, like many of the actions that he's taken since assuming the role of president, the office. This is yet another example of the president is doing exactly what he was saying in his campaign promises and he is delivering. The president believes, like I do, that many of the neighbors in the western states of the federal government can be a good neighbor. We can protect areas of cultural and economic importance and they can use the federal lands for economic development when appropriate. Just as Teddy Roosevelt envisioned it, I am a lifetime supporter and admirer of Teddy Roosevelt's policies and the president is the same. The Antiquities Act of 1906, and that was under President Roosevelt, it did give the president the authority to declare historic monuments, landmarks, prehistoric structures, and other objects of historic and scientific interest on federal lands. Also in the Antiquities Act, authors specified the scope of the authority to designate the smallest area compatible with proper care and management of the objects to be protected. That's verbiage from the Act itself. So with the average size of the monuments designations over the past years has increased, I think that it should be worthy of notice. Since the 1990s, when the Act was first used, the average size of the National Monuments came from 422 acres to today in the millions of acres. So here's what the Executive Order does in summary. It restores the trust between local communities in Washington that the local communities and states will have a voice, those states that are affected and local communities. The executive order puts America and the Department of Interior back on track to manage our federal lands in accordance with 
traditional multiple use as laid out by Pinchot and the President and directs the Department of Interior to make recommendations to the President on whether a monument should be rescinded, resized, modified in order to better manage our federal lands. And this executive order gives rural communities across America again a voice as his campaign promised and is delivering that. Here's what the executive order does not do. The executive order does not strip any monument of its designation the executive order does not loosen any environmental or conservation regulation on any land or marine areas. It is a review of the last 20 years and a review has timelines in which I am obligated to uphold. So what you need to understand, this is not, this is wolf in sheep's clothing. It is an illusion that um, the power is being given back to the people. It is an illusion that the land that was stolen by the federal government is given back to the states. It is an illusion that they are going to be able to use their land and their resources in order to help improve their way of life. And it is an illusion that this executive order, as President Trump stated, quote, he's putting the states back in charge, unquote, that does none of this, none of this. They are still declaring this is just a review, and they are still declaring that it is, quote, unquote, federal land, even though the federal government has no authority to own land in the first place. I'm going to show you. Okay, so what we are going to look at is we are going to see what the power of the legislative branch is. Okay, this is Congress that we are speaking about. This is the powers of Congress. They're few and very defined. And the reason we need to speak about the powers of Congress, because they're the ones who did the Antiquities Act many, many years ago. We have to also understand that the federal government, if you will, has to remain within that 10 miles square within the District of Columbia, except for certain needful buildings, which would be armories and I'm going to show that to you. So what we're going to do is we're going to scroll down to section 17. Now in section 17 to exercise executive legislation in all cases whatsoever over such district not exceeding 10 miles square as may by secession of particular states. In other words, if the states give it back to the federal government and the acceptance of Congress become the seat of the government of the United States and to exercise like authority over all places purchased by the consent of the legislature of that state in which the same shall be for the erection of forts, magazines, arsenals, dockyards, and other needful buildings. Now, what you need to understand, and you, it's very important that you understand this, the states can secede and give back property to the federal government. That has not been done, however. The federal government has claimed these properties as federal. Not only that, they have to have the agreement of the state legislature and the federal government has to pay for that property. They have not purchased any of those properties that they claim to own and on top of that, have not done it with consent of the legislatures of those states. And even when that happens, 
it has to be specifically for the erection of forts, magazines, arsenals, dockyards. And when it's talking about other needful building, it's talking about situations like post office buildings. Nothing in this ever suggests that they are allowed to own any sort of land whatsoever outside of their 10 mile square. Why is this so important? We have the situations all across our union, whether it be the Patriots that took a stand in Bunkerville, whether it be what happened in Oregon. These individuals, through the corrupt politicians, are yanking up property that belongs to the states and to the people of those states. And what they are doing is they are using that, the Bureau of Land Management, to not only quote unquote manage those properties, which they do not do, they are stealing the resources of the states. They are stealing uranium, gold, water. If the states would stand up and kick them back into their 10 mile square and say, hold up, you're usurping your authority. You have no right to do that. The Antiquities Act in and of itself was unconstitutional in the first place. The BLM is unconstitutional in the first place. So although the mainstream media and the quotes from the president himself, so out of the president's mouth, the quotes that he is, quote, returning the power back to the people, unquote, or the quote that he's putting the states back in charge, unquote. That is not accurate. It is not true. They are still claiming this as federal land, uh, illegally and unconstitutionally. I would love to see if you really want to make a difference, President Trump. How about an executive order instructing the Bureau of Land Management and the Environmental Protection Agency to stay within their 10 miles square or abolish them altogether? How about legislation that abolishes the Antiquities Act? How about supporting the legislation that's been put forth to abolish the EPA? How about legislation to abolish the Bureau of Land Management? How about returning the 1.35 million acres in Utah that President Obama at the time signed an executive order declaring it a national monument, which is unconstitutional and illegal in the first place. Individuals need to really understand that by the stroke of a pen, these presidents and I'm not referring to President Donald Trump at this point. I'm referring to previous presidents, and I am not talking about just President Obama. It has been going on for a very long time, over 100 years. But they have been stealing the land and the resources of each and every one of the people of the states that are free and sovereign nation states part of our union in order by writing on a sheet of paper and writing a signature that is no different than a king. President Trump, out of full respect, I respect and I thank you for at least signing an executive order and ordering the review of these monuments. But I ask you this, sir. 
if you truly want to give it back to the people and you truly want to be constitutional, then sign an executive order and give back every one of those quote unquote monuments. Give back every bit of the land that has been stolen by the signature of a man from the people. Because it was stolen under a letter and a signature of presidents that thought they were kings. If you're truly for the people, you can reverse exactly what they did with a simple letter giving it back to every one of the people of our union. So while I applaud your effort, President Trump, and it is a step in the right direction, I ask you and I pray that it comes upon your heart to do what is right and what is moral for the people of each and every state of our union. If you want to be constitutional, give back the land to the states, abolish the Bureau of Land Management, the EPA. There is no room for any type of attack upon our people. The states are in debt because they cannot use their own resources. And it is a proven fact the states and the people within those states take much better care of the land than any federal bureaucrat that seeks to only snatch up the land to steal it from the people to make it to where the people cannot use their resources and to where they are kicked out of their states and pushed into that little box of that UN Agenda 21 to force people off the land and into the cities. I hope and pray, President Trump, that you will hear my words and you will understand I say it with all sincerity, thank you for at least beginning the review. But if you truly want to give it back to the people and you truly want to follow the Constitution, abolish all of those unlawful claims that the federal government claims to have that federal land. It's unconstitutional. It's unethical. It's illegal. And just because previous presidents signed their name to a sheet of paper doesn't make it so. Thank you. God bless each and every one of you. And as always, watch your backs. Check your facts. Semper Fidelis. And good night.